unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verses 19. The Bible says, Also every man to whom God has given riches and possession and the power to enjoy them and to accept his appointed lot and to rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. The Amplified Bible. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says that every man whom God has given riches. Somebody say riches. riches. And he gives you possessions. And the power to enjoy them. And to accept his appointed lot. And to rejoice in his toil. Your toil. The Bible says this is the gift of God to him. Praise God. It's the gift of God for you to enjoy riches. It's the gift of God for you to have possessions, priceless possessions. Praise God. It's the gift of God for you to enjoy every pleasure on the earth in the gifts he has given, as long as it's in line with goodness and God. Hallelujah. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Hallelujah. The Bible calls him the father of all lights, and, and, and he is the giver of all good and perfect gifts. And the Bible says in him there is no shadow of turning. All good and perfect gifts are from God. They are from above. Hallelujah. The Bible is clear. He lavishly gives you those things. John 1.17. John 1.17 says in message version. He says every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. The gifts are rivers of light cascading down from the Father of light. And there is nothing deceitful in God. Nothing too fast and nothing what? Fickle. God wants you happy. Somebody shout hallelujah. God wants you rich. He wants you to enjoy the pleasures of this life that is in line with his will and the word. I'm not saying God wants you to drink alcohol. No. Praise God. We're talking about good gifts. Somebody shout hallelujah. He loves you to, to put on nice clothes. To live in a nice house. To hold a nice mobile phone and drive a very expensive car and go to heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says it's God's gift to you. When the Bible speaks of how blessed are they that are poor, it's not about people who are lacking. He's talking about the poverty of knowledge. Men that don't have knowledge. He's not talking about people who are simply poor in the pockets. There are people who are rich in the world, but they're poor here. Do you understand what I'm saying? God has blessed you. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow to it. I'm talking about a blessing. I'm talking about the blessing. The things that help us understand the reality. Because sometimes things don't manifest in our lives not because they don't exist, but because we don't hold the reality and understanding of those things. Praise God. Hallelujah. When he says that he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, know ye not, he adds to say, through the epignosis of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Through the epignosis, through the knowledge the complete and perfect knowledge. He has given through the complete and perfect knowledge. That means as long as your mind understands the perfect and complete knowledge of God, everything that he has given manifests in your life. Because it's not manifesting, it does not mean it's not given. It's given. It's one thing to have, it's another not to have the manifestation of what God has given you. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's like God has given us divine health and we have sick people. They mean that God has not given. No. The, the man of God, Kenneth Hagen, used to call it the double cure. You cannot claim the forgiveness of sins and not cling to the healing of the body. 
The Bible says, He that forgiveth our sins and healeth our bodies, all our infirmities, all our sicknesses. It's the double cure. That is why people under the law are sickly. You know why? Because they don't believe in forgiveness of sins. Many of them hold guilt consciences. When they are overwhelmed, they go to the rock lower. Yet the psalmist says, when I'm overwhelmed, take me to a rock that is higher than I. What is the rock higher than I? Christ. Whatever things are lovely, beautiful, what? Of good report, if they have any praise on them, think on these things. And Christ is all these things. And as we behold him like in a mirror, Praise God. We see the glory of God. What happens? We are metamorphosed. We are changed to the very image, the same image, the glory from glory to glory. That full stature of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We behold him. Somebody say, I see the Lord. And I'm changed. You understand what I'm saying? Now, God has ordained you for great things. He has ordained you and don't be sorry to be rich. Many people don't understand what it means to be the blessing. He said, you shall lend to nations and shall have no need of borrow. Hallelujah. He says, you shall reign over nations. What does that mean? You are first in everything and the first things belong to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. There are people here who will never own anything in first hand. The phone you have is second hand. The shoe you have is second hand. The car you have is second hand. Everything you have is second hand. And yet the Bible says you shall reign over. The distinct definition in the Hebrew, it tells you you shall be first in all things. He says whether things present or things to come. He says all are yours. Even the next note, it's yours. But, but you see, we need to tell people to go to heaven. Yes, we are also going to tell you to go to heaven. But we will help you not to suffer before you go to heaven. Because many of you are living for so long. Praise God. Hallelujah. For me, it came as a realization many years ago. And I realized that I was not a third world citizen. And I refused it from that day. And the wheels started turning. The lines started falling in prison places. The heritage is goodly. And I love it. Somebody shout Hallelujah. He says we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know that. He was rich. But for your sakes he became poor. That through his poverty you might be rich. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say I'm rich in the mighty name of Jesus. But you see, it's one thing to claim a blessing. It's another to claim the blessing. There's a difference. He did not say a blessing. He said the blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow. The blessing. Right? Has the principles that are set for the blessing. So as it says in Ezekiel 44 and verses 30. You shall bring of all fast fruits for his blessings. And the first of all things. The priest that he may cause the blessing to settle in your house. Not a blessing. The blessing. Fast fruits. Fast fruits are not for a blessing. Fast fruits are for the blessing. And I say, you know, ever since I was born, I've never given fast fruit. I don't even know what fast fruit is. Wow. Praise God. That's why you're in debt and paying loans to banks. You'd rather give them interest, right? Okay. To be continued. Da, da, da. Praise God. But you see, what I'm trying to say here is, the Bible says, he, the Lord shall command a blessing. The blessing. He didn't say the Lord shall command a blessing. He says, the Lord shall command the blessing on you. And it tells you how your treasures will be goodly. Somebody shout hallelujah. He tells you how everything will start aligning. Praise God. Two years ago, a certain gentleman came to my office. And he told me, I'm a pastor. He said, I'm 38 years old. He said, I've been married for four years. And ever since I was born up to this age, I've never held more than 300,000 shillings in my hands. How much is that in dollars? 90 or 80 dollars? Never held... $80 in his hands ever since he was born. He told me my child is three years old and she has never tasted meat. Are you hearing me? And, and I told him, you know what? I'll give you transport every day to come to service and give me three months with you if your life never changes. I now stake on me to say I'm not a man of God. He came once, he never came back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord has placed it on my heart to help some of us understand 
what it means to be blessed of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord to pursue you. The blessing of the Lord to be upon you. Praise God. It's not the will of God for a Christian to be, oh God, to sleep hungry because you lack. It's not the will of God. It's not the will of God for the landlord to throw you out of the house. It's not the will of God. He addeth no sorrow to it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh-uh. He addeth no sorrow to it. Praise God, somebody. Now, in Ecclesiastes, he has told you, a man gets riches, possessions, and the power to enjoy it and accept his appointed Lord to rejoice in his toil. And he says, this is the gift of God to that man. He gets a man, gives him possessions, he gives him riches, and he gives him the power to enjoy it. And God says that is the gift of God. And the Bible is clear that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Is that so? Amen. Amen. Now go to Ecclesiastes chapter 6 and verses 1. In this instance now he says, That for I have seen an evil which is under the sun, and it is common among men. Common, underline it. The Bible says, It lies heavily upon men. The Amplified. It lies heavily upon men. A man to whom God has given riches, possessions and honor so that he lacks nothing for his soul of all that he might desire yet God does not give him the power or capacity to enjoy them things which are gifts from God the man does not enjoy the things which are gifts from God in the fifth chapter he gave him riches glory and honor and everything and he gave him the power and he says that is my gift in this instance, the gift still exists of riches and possessions and honor, but this time he's void of the power to enjoy them. Somebody shout hallelujah. But a stranger in whom he has no interest succeeds him and consumes and enjoys them. And he says, this is vanity, emptiness, falsity, futility. It is a sore affliction. Somebody shout hallelujah. The KJV calls it an, a wicked and evil disease. Some are not suffering from the disease of headache. Uh uh. This one. Praise God. I've spoken about this scripture in 6 Ephesians before, but not in the light I'm going to speak it tonight. Because now, tonight, I, I, I want to go a bit deeper than just making a sentence for you to understand. How do you have everything that pertains to life and godliness? How are you blessed with everything that you need? And you do not have the power to eat thereof. And a stranger comes. Stranger to the promise. Stranger to the covenant. A non-believer. And he enjoys these things. While you're still rotting and failing in every aspect. They're, they're living a good life. You're struggling. No, as long as I'm going to heaven. No, that's, that's a foolish consolation. It's a foolish consolation. Abraham was rich. Abraham knew God and he was counted for righteousness and he is the father of us all. Oswaza family. You are shaming the family. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So it's one thing for a man to, to have all these things. It's another for him to have the power of these things. And that's what I want to talk about tonight because we've seen many of them they don't doubt that they have these things. They don't have, doubt that, they, that God has given them everything that pertains to life and godliness. And he says this is the gift of God and the gifts of God are without repentance. He does not regret to whom he gives them. He says he doesn't take back. God is not the one who gave you the Amplified. He says for the gifts and the call of God are irre. Vocable. The Bible says he never withdraws them once they are given and he does not change his mind about those who, to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. God can't regret calling Lubega grace. Praise God. He doesn't regret anointing me. He does not regret blessing me. He does not regret it. Now, that's the question then. If God does not take back, if his gifts are irrevocable, and the Bible says that it's the gift of God to give you riches and honor and the power thereof in, in Ecclesiastes 5, and then he gets into Ecclesiastes 6, and he says that he has, he has given you the riches, the glory, but he gives you not the power, then there's a problem. How can he take away what he has given? Simple. The Hebrew language usually has a problem with the causative and the permissive. 
close. In this instance, if you're reading, it sounds like the causative clause because that's the only way the Hebrew translates it. But in the actual sense, it is the permissive clause. What do I mean by that? Causative means God did it. Permissive means God let it. In this instance, God let it. He didn't do it because if he does it, he's going against his word. He says, my gifts and calling are without repentance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it's not possible that I'm the one who took away from you what I gave you. That means that there's something that you might be doing or have done that detaches you from what I've given you. Grace has given you everything. But the reality of that manifestation comes through the understanding of how these things manifest in our lives. Somebody shout hallelujah. And it comes through knowledge. Somebody shout hallelujah. It comes through knowledge. Through knowledge. Praise God. Not works. No. Knowledge. When knowledge comes, the word of God works in you for the manifestation of what you already have in God. See? When the Bible says that by his stripes we are healed, does that mean that everybody walking the face of this earth and is a believer is without pain? No. Some carry the pain. But the, the reality of God to finish that work, he is done. But you see, the manifestation is another thing. And that's why the legal people get it wrong. Instead now, they start giving us lines of things to do. I did not come to tell you of things to do. No. I came to tell you of the things to know. Because once the word of God gets into your life, the Bible says it carries its own inherent power. He says in the book of Colossians that that book is bearing what? Fruit and is still growing by its own inherent power. Even as it has done among yourselves ever since the day you first had and came to know and understand the grace of God. You came to know the grace of God in reality deeply, clearly and thoroughly becoming accurately and intimately acquainted with it. When you receive the gospel of his grace, it comes with its inherent power to work in you. So I'm not here to tell you the 25 things you must do. I'm here to tell you the things you must know. Praise God. Because it's one thing for you to have all of these things, but not have the power to walk therein. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's a reality of understanding. It's like when you read in 1 John 5, 19, he says, we know that we are of God and the whole world is under the power. It's life in wickedness. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. We know, we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. You know what many Christians read it as? Many Christians read that scripture as we are of God, we are in the world, and the whole world lies in wickedness therefore we are a part of the wickedness we are a part of the weakness we are a part of the poverty we are a part of the luck we are a part of everything because we're in the world therefore we have to protect the portion of the world oh, oh amplified bible the amplified bible says we know not negatively he says we know he says positively that means this knowledge has no negative understanding in it it has no negative connotation in it he says we know positively that we are of God and the whole world he says around us is under the power of the evil one ah uh -uh. the evil one is not he's around you but not with you he's around you but not in you he's around you but so yes the evil one has power on the world around But not on Grace Lubega. Put your name. <laughs> Are you getting it? Are you getting it? You see, this is powerful than you could ever think. And let me make you understand why. How many times have you heard Christians saying, we are breaking the power of the enemy. The power of the enemy. And they are breaking it off themselves. Break the power of the enemy of an unbeliever. But not you. Hello? Break the power of the enemy of the non-believer. But not you. He says that the world is under the power. The world around us is under the power. 
We are not under the power. With us, it schemes, it wiles, it tricks. Put you on the armor of God that you may be able to withstand the tricks, the wiles of the enemy. Somebody shout hallelujah. The tricks of the enemy. For us, it's tricks. For them, it is power. But for us, it is tricks. He's tricking you into thinking you have cancer. Ooh, he's tricking you into thinking that your marriage is failing. He's tricking you into thinking that your child is dense. He's tricking you into thinking that your house is falling. He's tricking you into thinking that you are, you are not poor. The devil is a liar. That's why we fight with faith. He calls it the good fight of faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now let's go to this power in Ecclesiastes 6. He says he gives not the man the power to what? The Hebrew word there is shalat. The word power there is shalat. And shalat for Hebrew power, it means mastery. Are you hearing me? Mastery. Domination. To domineer. To exercise power over. To carry the ability thereof to master. Let me explain what it means. Some of you know the famous... There's a lady who died in the United States. She was a, she was a singer. And one person was narrating the story of this beloved woman's death. And he said, Whitney burnt a hundred million dollars in drugs. Some of you only half a million dollars can change your family. You even change the family name. You stop talking English. You adopt Mandarin or Spanish. You can even learn English the next day. Praise God. It can change your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? The writer here is talking about mastery. Praise God. The writer here is talking about mastery. The Bible says that we which strive for mastery, we strive lawfully. Praise God. He speaks of the laws that evoke what is given. Praise God. Do you know there are people in this world, when they're talking about power, let me explain it. Some of you have seen recently, I was watching a little clip, and they were showing the history of all the people that have hit jackpots in the United States. Like guys who have won lottery by the millions of dollars. And sad as is, almost all the people they showed in that video lost it. All of them that they showed in that video lost it. Go do a little research on people who win lottery. And tell me how many keep it. Tell me how many keep it. Some of you think that if you wake up tomorrow morning and you're a million dollars rich or 200 million dollars rich, your life will change forever. No. It's one thing for it to be on your account and to be in your names. It's another for you to keep it. We're talking about that power. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some people have it, but they're not able for it. It's available. It's like having a car, but you don't know how to drive it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like having a mobile phone that you cannot operate fully. You have it, but it does not serve the full functions of it because you don't know how to operate it. Mastery. Do you understand what I'm saying? And God has put principles in his word. And because his word is true, inherently, these principles are not supposed to come to you simply as commands only, but they're supposed to come also with the power to work in you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. Why does the Bible say that one who walks with the wise is wise? Why does the Bible say that if a man walks with the wise, he becomes wise? He's wise. If a man walks with the wise, he's wise. This Bible says it. You understand? And it says, and he that walks with fools is what? Shall be destroyed. Can you believe even the people you associate with, you can become like? Just being around broke people with broke conversations. The 
Uh, do you understand? No. Whether you're under grace or you're under the law, these are in the class of the things of mastery. You must know your company. Yes, keep up you poor ones who you want to get up to your level. And a few peers who you need to minister comfort on. Are you hearing me? But look for wise people. Years ago, I found a group of six ladies. Probably all of them were above in their, above their 30s. And, and there was about, I think, one who was married. And then she divorced. And then they kept their group. Are you hearing me? And the they used to call themselves something, something. But it, it, had, it had something to do with independent people in their little corner. And so this woman comes and tells me my marriage has failed. I asked her, tell me about this little group I find you with in the restaurant. Oh, no, those, those girls are my, my fellow, that, that, that. She gave me a name. So I asked her, who of those is married? Actually, at none. And I asked her, so you're asking me why your marriage failed? Hello? Woman, if you're going to get married, look for married women. Hallelujah. Look at how they swing their rings and start swinging your hand when it's still empty. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go back home the time they go back home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Start conversations of women who are married. Even before you have, hallelujah, call it the things that are not as though they are. But you're keeping a bunch of sorry women who are all single and you all believe in God for marriage. Come on. Where will the anointing come? He that walketh with the wise shall become wise. That is not in the effort of what you do. It's in the ability of the word to work in you. To sit around men of wisdom. Because faith without works. Even in the grace dispensation. The difference only here with us is we believe, know it first and then it works through us. The men of the law, they do it for it to work. No, you're not doing it for it to work. Hello? You are allowing it to work in you because it's already working. It's working. You're simply allowing it. Faith is allowing it because it's working. Receiving what's working. The law is trying to make it work. We're not telling you to make it work. No, we're trying to tell you to simply receive what is working. God has not held anything from you. But now we're talking about manifestation, fanero, the manifestation of things. Because it's one thing to have all these things, but you still look funny. Praise God. As you see, he says, if you walk with us, because he knew it. He says, the eunuch is made by three. Either you are made by men. That means there's, there's something that rings on your life when you associate with a man of a certain grace. Or there are things that come by your diligence of separation with God. And there are also things that come on your life because God put it on you. Even before you are formed in your mother's womb. Who is understanding what I'm saying? Timothy had an anointing. Carried on through from grandmother and mother. But that's not quite the thing that positions him in the faith as the next apostolic voice in that dispensation. No, he needed Paul's hand. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, whether you understand this or you don't, that association is key because it's association, it's assimilation, it's impartation. You only are imparted by what you assimilate to and you only assimilate to what you associate with. Are you hearing me? One bishop friend of mine was sharing one of those days in a conference. He said when, when he was growing up, he was raised in a very poor family and he used to get his children and take them in very expensive hotels. And he says, so that they can smell greatness and success. And these kids are young, but they're already, none of them is probably below, probably half a million dollars each. They smelled success early. They were exposed to success. You understand what I'm saying? When your eyes start to see certain things, woo! Praise God. We're sharing with uh, some people and, and, and we were all amazed at how, you know, we're sharing that issue of what you continue to behold, right? How when couples continue to live together, they start to look like 
it is because he sees her face more than he sees his or she sees his face more than he sees hers you, you understand and before you know that are, are you getting it he had a small nose it starts to become big wait a minute your nose was small no no but he's trying to pull what he's beholding hallelujah and as we behold like in a mirror the glory of God when you look in the word you start looking like the word hallelujah when you look at the world the world that is lying in wickedness and desolation you start looking like wickedness and desolation somebody shout hallelujah you look like where you're looking most I said you look like where you're looking most slap yourself and summer success praise God hallelujah so God says I have given you all these things but do you have the mastery over them do you have the mastery over them for example I'll give you an example and the examples to show that people don't have mastery the Bible tells you if riches increase in Proverbs he says set not your heart on them that's mastery I wish I had the time to explain all these principles I've seen in the word because I know at least 12 of them but I'm just giving examples because of time the Bible says trust not in oppression become not vain in robbery if riches increase set not your heart upon them that's mastery that's the power released on what God has given you for you to sustain it you're able for it how many people get money and then they set their heart upon what they've gotten how do i know that you've set your heart upon what you've gotten you change attitude because you've gotten money you stop speaking to your old boys because the lord elevated you your accent changes because the lord elevated you you stop receiving calls from certain people because the lord what elevated you you see an old friend and then you pull up the window praise God no set not your heart you know what that means it means however rich the Lord makes you be so free that you can come before service and arrange a chair oh no you're so rich <laughs> do you understand what I'm trying to tell you because they don't make you you make them hallelujah you're the master of them Man is supposed to be answering all things. Man is not supposed to be the one being answered to. Man should not control you. Man should not have authority over you. It should not determine where you are on Thursday. You're supposed to determine where it should be on Thursday. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. But some people have not understood that there are laws, there are laws, not the law, but there are principles that govern mastery. He says, he that strives for mastery must be temperate in all things. Temperate in all things, patterned. You, you understand my point? You must pattern yourself in all things. If a man with the power of this thing, if a man with mastery has these things, you, you, there's a way your life is, there's a way like I said, some people cannot handle even a million shillings. They can die. Are you hearing me? One time I saw a dear Christian. When this fellow gets money, everything in the world freezes. You understand? He forgets he has bills. He forgets he has a program. He forgets he has to plan. He forgets he has nothing. Everything switches off money. Are you hearing me? Until it gets over. Then they survive. Then when they get money, everything freezes. That's money having mastery over you. That's money having mastery over you. That's his riches and blessing having mastery over you. You used to walk and then the Lord gave you a car. What happened? That day you passed near your enemy. There was a right fruit. In your heart you know there was a right fruit. But then you... Are you hearing me? You even stood a bit to say you're on the phone. <laughs> Why? Because you got what? Money. Some of you even promised the die get money. 
you will see. What of those who have it? By God, hallelujah. They know they have it. It's how you respond to the vanities of life. Some of you, when you get a new phone, you can't even sleep. The whole night, you understand? Like you've taken coffee. Oh my God, I'm excited, I'm excited. What excites you? Listen, you're the one in the time series excited because in that time series, eh, you have received the phone. But that thing was yours long ago. He says, all things are yours. Whether things present, all things to come, underline that, they're all yours. Right now, there's a man thinking, how should the next car look like? And he's working to my vision. Believe it or not, it's up to you. Somebody said hallelujah. The next construction program, the next technology in construction, it is thinking about Fanero Church. Hallelujah. That's what I believe. Somebody said hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And I'll tell you one of the most powerful things that happened to me when the Lord was teaching me mastery. The Lord taught me to leave from the end. Faith from the end is quite another experience of the Christian life from a man who lives from the beginning or looks at their faith as a journey. When God has revealed the end of all things, the perfection of all things, the broadness of that word, the broadness of that word takes you to a certain end. And when it takes you to the end of those things and you're coming back to relieve your life, let me make it easier for you. What is going to happen to you next year? God knew it. You understand? If you embrace this God life, you won't need it to happen next year for you to respond. And Are you hearing me? You'll position yourself spiritually for everything that God has already ordained because you're living outside the earthly time. Eons. Time and space. Faith is the creator of eons. Eons are not the creator of faith. You cannot have a perfect faith when you subject yourself to the eons. You cannot have a perfect faith when you subject yourself to time and space. You can't say, one day I will be this. That's not a man of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The God of faith, the Bible says, he calleth the living from the dead and calleth the things that be not as though they are. He lives from the end of things. He does not have a language. He has not mastery in language that contradicts that reality, that all the things that he speaks, he calleth them as though they are. God does not speak future tense. You have been blessed. He didn't say you will be blessed. He, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, you have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. By his stripes, ye were healed. He's speaking past tense. Why do you enter your house and say, ha, I don't know where I'm going to get rent. Woo. You've put a possibility of failure in the future. We know positively that we are of God. In future, I'll do this. In future, I'll do that. In future, that's not the language of God. He doesn't exist there. When a man understands mastery, the first thing that changes is your tongue. He says, we err in many things. He says, we err and men make mistakes in many things. He says, but if any man offend not in what? The Bible says, that man is a perfect man and is also able to breed the whole body. You can control everything when you understand this thing. The Lord taught me how to live out of the time series of men. And when that reality, not just the thought, but when that reality hits your spirit, your emotions change toward the things you need. You will never for a day sit in your house and be sad 
because you don't have rent. Because you don't live in the time series of rent coming in the future. You live in the end of things where rent is come. Whether it is seen or it is not seen. I want to slap somebody. Who understands what I'm saying? There cannot be failure for a man who is at the end of things. Why? Because the process is explainable by faith. I will never fail. That's not, I'm not speaking from a journey of trying to claim so my next step is sure. Uh Uh-uh. He's the solid rock on which I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. This is eternal life. Why we look not at the things that are seen? For the things which are seen are temporal. And the things which are not seen are eternal. And that's why we behold. For all things are for your sex. That through the thanksgiving of many, this might redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. All things are for you. Carry that reality. Listen, when you embrace this mastery, you're going to be shocked at about how quick things are going to come. It doesn't mean that they've not been there. It only means that they were seeking for manifestation. Remember, that's the power of the word. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God and the things that are seen were not brought about by the things present continuous, which do appear. That means that there is a present continuous process of things do appear. It's going to appear. It's going to appear. It's going to appear. But because it has appeared, it doesn't mean it wasn't there. Don't live in what appears. Live in what is. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. God formed those worlds before they came into existence. And they were. Let there be light. Light got a shape. And he saw that it was good. The manifestation. He commanded it, light be. And it came. I wish you understand what I'm saying. How can you go back home and say, I am poor? With this reality. How can you go back home and say, my family is failing. Why are you leaving? You know, many people say salvation is a journey. It's not a journey. People who are faking salvation are in a journey. People who have not yet understood salvation, look at it as a journey. Salvation is not a journey. Salvation is an end. Come on. Who is the central theme of salvation? Christ. He tells you he's the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the first and the last. He, how can you tell me that you're in a journey to meet the last when you have the last? That is why now we have to talk about the anointing deeper than just casting out flus and cleansing lepers. We want to get into the place of the anointing that knoweth all things. He says we have an unction from on high. We know all things. I'm talking of that anointing. But somebody should take it. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. There is an anointing that takes you to the knowledge of all things. You... You're not progressively. No. I know my future. I know my children. I know, I know my ministry. I know that I'm a success. I know that I can't fail. I'm not believing God for it. I know. That is why we do miracles. Because miracles in this story are an end. They're not a journey. Our expectation shall not be cut short. He says, I have... I know, he says, the plans that I have for you. Plans to make you prosper and not to harm you. He says, plans to give you a future, a hope. He says, to give you, listen, unexpected end. Do you know what it means? He says, I want to give you unexpected end. He says that you know how you'll finish. You don't walk in this world trying to believe God for a car or a house or God raise me, anoint me. No, you know how you'll finish. That is his plan. That's Jeremiah. When you come to the New Testament, he says he has made known unto us the mystery of his will. Woo! When you know the mystery of his will, that means the expected end for you is not a plan you discover. No, it's a plan fully revealed when you choose to believe 
the word of God. The expected end is not a journey of life. It is something you embrace when you believe the word of God. He has made known to you. My goodness. Let your meditations be sweet. Let them be so far from plunder. Let your determined end be so clear that God has ordained these things beforehand, before the foundation of the world, that you might walk therein. He says, you're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus and two good works for which you are preordained beforehand that you might walk in it. The Amplified says, the good life for which you were pre-arranged and made ready to live. You're not only pre-arranged for it, you're ready for it. Simply enter it. Live at the end of things. Don't make it a journey. You're going to take long for what is supposed to come quickly. Are you hearing me? When you don't understand this, you frustrate the spirit that quickens you. You, you frustrate the life of God that makes things come not subject to the time dimension. Some of you think you need 20 years to have a big ministry. Some of you think that you need 35 years of toil. Oh my goodness. Because we are living in the end. And every day it's a joyous experience and celebration of manifestation. Of manifestation. Of manifestation. I don't need 40 years for that. Uh -uh. I know where I'm living. Hallelujah. He's the owner of everything. He's the creator of heaven and earth. The boss, the CEO of the universe. He has it all. We live from the end. That's mastery right there. So when you get a good car, you don't get, oh my God, I'm so shocked. No, we don't get shocked. That's your body. That's the flesh. The spirit man says, I knew this was mine. Yes, I knew this was mine. I deserved it. Why? Because Jesus paid it all. And to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He stood while I was this is my father's word and to listening is all nature sings and round me rings the music of the sphere. father's world I cannot lack I cannot want any good thing I cannot strive with men I cannot be carnal in the things that are already mine say I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that the lines fall unto me in pleasant places I have a goodly heritage say in the name of Jesus my paths drop with greatness say in the name of Jesus I'm blessed Going in, I'm blessed. Going out, I'm blessed. In the city, I'm blessed. In the country, I'm blessed. In this nation, I'm blessed. In any other nation, I'm blessed. I cannot be broke. 
I don't get broke. I cannot fail. I don't fail. I will not strive like the men of this world. The world is fallen. I am not. Satan has power over them. He has no power over me. The riches of God are on my life. The possessions of his spirit are on me. His grace is upon me. And the power, the mastery is over me. I cannot fail. Now start to speak some crazy things. One minute of speaking crazy things on your ministry, on your family, on your life, on your children. Rabba Baba Kosha. Come on, speak. Somebody's household is getting delivered. Somebody's life is getting free. Shere Cobra Keta, you lend to nations. King shall come to my rising. Cause I am favored and graced. In all I do, I shall prosper. Everything I touch shall be blessed. King shall come to my eyes. Cause I am favored and graced. In all I do, I shall prosper. I'll be blessed. Come on, sing it and say, say it. To my rising. Come on, sing it. Cause I am favored and great. In all, in all, in all, in all. Everything I touch shall be blessed, shall be blessed. Say, King shall come to your rising. blessing of the Lord is upon you something just happened tonight something has happened this evening I know it and there is nothing the devil can do he's a liar hey receive it Sabra kopo porondo rogos, si tende kosa tala, senda tora randa kosa, si bratara ra ra ra. Spirits of poverty, you're destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Lack and strife, they're not your portion. They will not come near your dwelling in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything I tell. 
shall be blessed. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Clap, clap, clap. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ and you want to be born again, everything I've been sharing is for people in this covenant. If you're outside that covenant, I want to give you an opportunity to come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now, praise God. You're going to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I believe that you died and rose again. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again tonight. Tonight. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.